Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Faith Ministries, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Today is Saturday, December 19th, 2020, and I am here to tell the truth, testify of the goodness of the Lord, and shame the devil, because we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. I just spent 15 minutes making a video, and suddenly it stopped, making this rendition of the video. So the enemy definitely does not want this message to go out, but we cover, I cover this broadcast right now with the blood of Jesus. And I ask Heavenly Father, Lord, that your angels will surround this broadcast and surround this place, oh Heavenly Father, with flaming swords and protect us, Lord. Protect me that there will be no backlash from the message that I'm about to deliver. And also to protect the viewers and anyone who's listening to the sound of my voice right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. I blind each and every monitoring spirit or any spirit that might be a blocking spirit that is designed to sabotage this message, Lord, that this message will reach the people that it is it is supposed to reach, Lord, and that they will be edified. And now, Holy Spirit, I invite you into this broadcast, and I ask that you use me, Lord, as an instrument of Heavenly Father, Lord, for apart from you, I can do nothing. Without you, I am nothing, Lord. And so I ask, Lord, that your words, not mine, be communicated to my friends, my brothers, and my sisters of Heavenly Father, Lord. And I ask that you open up our spiritual eyes and our spiritual minds, Lord, that we might understand, O Heavenly Father, and that you might give us revelation, Lord. Because only through revelation are we able to pray more effectively. We love you and we honor you and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, I wanted to share with you, and I know that I've not been around for quite some time, but the truth is that I have been under spiritual attack, and I'm here to share my story with you in the hopes that it might uplift some of you or someone that you know. So if this message is something that relates, is relatable to you or someone that you know, please share this video with whoever that person is because it might be just a game changer so this week has been really crazy um i've been under spiritual attack and i believe it's because i was about to step into the ministry that god had ordained for me see for a couple of years now about three years now um the lord has re he's revealed to me uh, that he was calling me into the intercess intercessory ministry, right? To be an, calling me to be an intercessor, to pray and stand in the gap for people. And he was calling me into a specific ministry within this intercession ministry, which I don't think now, now is not the right time for me to be able to mention that, but I will eventually. And this word or this calling has been confirmed to me by other godly people as well. Okay, so last week on Sunday, my husband and I, we hosted uh, one of his dear friends who also happens to be a pastor at a church uh, where we go, the church also where we got married. And um, as he was sitting and we were having dinner, you know, we had him over for dinner. The Spirit of the Lord said to me, ask him about the intercessory ministry at, at, at the church. So keep in mind, though, that I had been interested in this kind of ministry previously, and I had spoken to some people about it previously, but they didn't really have that kind of ministry. What they had was a system where when the, the primary pastor was pray, uh, delivering a message on Sunday or on Saturday evenings, um, there would be people in the back room that would be praying while the service is going on, right? For the pastor and for the congregants. Um, but I obeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit and, but, but before I could even ask him, he said, oh yes, and so we're doing all of this outreach work and then we have this intercession thing. And I was like, wow, I, you know, I said, pastor, I have to tell you, the Spirit just asked me to ask you, um, if there is an intercessory ministry um, in the church. And he said, absolutely. Um, they did have a ministry now where if people can call in if they have a, a, a prayer request. And it's like a hotline where someone can pick up the call and then pray on the phone with the person who needs the help. And so I said, I'm going to sign up for that because I felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit for me to start that. 
and so I was pretty excited um, I got the email address of the uh, pastor who was in charge of that ministry and I emailed him promptly but for some crazy reason the email bounced back and the bounce back did not even show up in my mail main inbox so I only discovered it way later that actually the email had bounced back because I had to for some reason I was prompted to check my spam and check my you know promotions and all that stuff in Gmail and I saw that the email had bounced back so I emailed a couple of people to ask them if they had his information so that I could email him or if you know to confirm the email address um, the email address was correct so I'm not exactly sure what that was but I could see that there was some sort of opposition happening already as a fun as a result of me trying to step into the calling that God had for me so what happened next was incredible because on Monday afternoon around four o'clock ish maybe I felt a shift in the atmosphere and I really wasn't quite sure what that was about I just knew that something wasn't right although I couldn't really tell what that was okay so I said oh well maybe it's work maybe it's you know I'm just tired this and that but still something just didn't feel right and I couldn't put a finger on it and I didn't know what it was okay so this whole week has been a struggle for me I have been under some serious spiritual attack it's like I tried to read my Bible because usually I will do that you know I had just recently um, committed to being more intentional with spending time with God on a daily basis and for some reason like on Monday it's like I opened my Bible to read my Bible and it was like I was slow to understanding and I really wasn't connecting with the word. I wasn't connecting with the Bible verses. And, and then I have a separate stack of Bible verses that I love. Those are my all time favorites. I love and I try to memorize them because I like to pray the word of God. And as I lifted these Bible verses and began to read them, I just, I wasn't really feeling anything. And so I'm like, what's going on? Like really what's going on with me? And so now I get into this mode where I'm trying to figure out what's going on because I'm able to sense that in the atmosphere around me, there is just, there's just something and I don't know what it is, okay? And then inside of me, I also felt that there was a wall that had been put up, like a thick wall around my around my heart okay so it felt in impenetrable and I just kind of felt like I wasn't myself to be quite honest with you I'm like what's going on I'm trying to reason in, in my head try to figure out what's going on but I really couldn't figure out what was what this was that was going on I just felt like there was a very thick wall that had come up and that direct access that I had to God, that direct free flow that I had was gone. So I labored in prayer, but it was in vain because even when I prayed, my words felt empty. My heart felt empty. When I read the word, there was no connection. Suddenly I just felt closed off from everything, spiritually, emotionally, just closed off and I began to get really concerned now I should have known because I'm always telling you guys that everything that happens in the physical really has a spiritual foundation and I knew this intellectually but somehow what was in my head was not translating down into my heart to generate actionable steps if you know what I mean so for the next few days this is kind of what happened it's like Tuesday same thing although on Tuesday I took time like I woke up I prayed and all of this and there's some people that I follow on YouTube that I pray along with and so I did that but 
still I was feeling a blockage like previously when I would pray I would be like walking under open heavens because I felt in those moments that when I prayed my prayers went up but I also felt that spiritually there was no barrier between me and the third heaven but this time my prayers were like hitting a wall okay they weren't even going beyond me which was terrible and so I was in a place of despair so to speak and then I started to have dreams okay that were not good that were indicative of manipulation or evil agents attempting to manipulate my destiny in the spirit spiritual realm and so what I noticed though was that because usually you know whenever I have those dreams when and when I say whenever it doesn't mean I have them frequently but should something happen and that happens I just have fire under me and I'm praying and I'm casting those things out but this time what I noticed this whole week was that I woke up I said oh my god I had this in this dream Lord you know I would pray but my prayers were lukewarm my heart wasn't really in it and I began to realize that spiritually I was incapacitated like someone who is drunk right like when you're drunk you have no awareness about your surroundings you are not able to your, your thinking is slow your response is delayed and so that was what I noticed as something that was happening to me I was slow to grasp the things of the spirit I was slow to grasp even though I knew that these dreams were bad demonic dreams that needed to be addressed spiritually I felt completely helpless and powerless to do anything about it so I had this level of spiritual lethargy you know I was completely lethargic spiritually and I felt that no you know hopeless and so I began to cry and call upon the Holy Spirit and say Holy Spirit I need you Holy Spirit where are you because when I wake up in the morning the first thing I say is good morning Holy Spirit but this time I just felt I could not feel the Holy Spirit I could not feel God I could not feel a thing at all I was in this place of being in a spiritual wilderness lonely by myself confused slow it's like you're a soldier in war and you're trying to wage war but you're completely ineffective even though you know the steps that you need to take and the things that you need to do somehow you're not able to do them and so I began to realize that this was a larger problem like this was really a big problem because prayer brothers and sisters a power a prayerless Christian is powerless okay so now I realize that my ability to pray had been cut it had, I had been incapacitated in this way and I didn't really know how to get back on my feet and do it but the one thing that I purposed in my heart I said okay I'm not feeling the Holy Spirit I don't know how I can move forward I don't know how I can pray when I feel just so distant when every God feels distant to me the Holy Spirit just does not seem to be available to me even though the Bible says he will be with me always why is it that I am not feeling him right now and in this space that I was in I began to realize that something in the spirit realm was happening to me that was affecting my ability to be effective in the spirit world or even in prayer itself but I didn't know what to do because I called upon God and I called upon the Holy Spirit I called upon Jesus and nothing was happening so but the one thing that I decided I said you know I love God I am committed to him even though I don't feel that he is here the Bible tells me that God is with me always and God is not a liar he's not like man he does not change his mind so I am going to walk the walk of faith I'm not going to walk according to how I feel I'm gonna walk according to the Word of God because it's inerrant it does not lie it does not make mistakes and so if the Bible says that God is walking with me then God is walking with me if the Bible says that if I call upon him he will hear me then I'm calling upon him and he hears me 
but the reception on my end is just not working. I'm not able to receive what he is telling me. And so I decided, regardless of how I felt, I was going to press on and press in. I was going to continue reading the word. I was going to continue praying. I was going to continue memorizing my Bible verses. And so I pressed in and pressed in and pressed in and continued doing this. And finally today, Last night, before I get into today, last night I, I had a crazy dream, okay? And in this dream, excuse me one second, I'm very thirsty. In this dream, sorry. So this dream was super demonic, by the way. In this dream, I was somewhere with a bunch of people and this woman, who was in real life is my uncle's wife. Um, she came to me and like she literally took all my hair off and she put it on her head. And at some point somewhere in the dream, either before or after this incident had happened, um, I was going somewhere with one of my cousins, this uncle's wife's daughter and she wanted to get ice cream or something and then the lady who was serving the ice cream gave us cakes to taste all right so i grabbed a portion of the cake and i ate it ate, ate it so for those of you who are not aware when you have dreams where you're eating those are demonic dreams that's a sign of evil agents attempting to initiate you right into sorcery it's a sign of these evil agents trying to covenant you without your knowing into the darkness and so that in and of itself was bad enough the second and then the, the, the part about this woman just grabbing my hair all of it the whole thing and putting it on her head I said no no this is this the enemy is attempting to steal my glory why because the Bible says that the hair of a woman is her crowning glory crown and glory right that's number one but also in the bible um samson was strong and he was anointed of god and he had a purpose but when he revealed the secret of why his hair was so long to delilah and his hair was cut he lost his power okay so by doubling in the market of the enemy you know being with this woman delilah who was not you know these were considered the heaven the godless people something had happened that caused samson to lose his power to lose his anointing and so i was starting to put the two things together you know being you know someone giving me something to eat in a dream which is really trying to covenant me into you know to tamper with me spiritually to tamper with my destiny and then this woman grabbing my hair and putting it on her head, that's just a sign of someone attempting to steal my glory and my honor. And so I knew that this dream, because last night I could not sleep, okay? I was up till about three something in the morning as far as I can remember. And I remember thinking for all these hours, I could be spending time praying, but I just couldn't bring myself to pray. And earlier in the day, I had said to my husband, you know, I'm feeling distant from God. I'm feeling just not connected and his response to me was well I see you reading the Bible every day and praying every day so I, I don't know I think that's between you and God you're going to have to kind of sort it out but to me I just was like I needed help I needed help and I just didn't know where to go for help so last night when I went to bed I said Lord give me a dream today give me a dream today to reveal what's going on in my life and then I had that dream so when I woke up in the morning I knew that this is serious okay I am under spiritual attack there are evil agents that are attempting to steal my glory and my honor and that are attempting there are spiritual forces that are speaking against my my destiny against my future and I was not gonna let that happen 
now still i'm feeling lethargic i'm still spiritually no, physically i'm fine i'm active i'm doing this and that but spiritually i was feeling dead and i cried out to god i said lord help me help me please help me holy spirit come through for me and then a thought came to me and said you know what better call pastor catherine now pastor catherine you know she's a very anointed woman of god and um we prayed together before and it's just been amazing and we have this connection when we pray because the last time we prayed as she was praying it's funny because as i was praying in the spirit because we were taking turns praying but when it was her time to pray the spirit of the lord was speaking inside of me and saying things but as the spirit was speaking these things she was saying these things in real life out loud as prayer and i was like whoa that was really so spooky so i said i'm gonna call pastor catherine i called her and pastor catherine if you watch this i just want to say thank you so much i appreciate you because it was really late and as soon as i called she said i'm gonna call you right back without hesitation without even knowing what was going on and so i said to her i need you to pray for me because i am under spiritual attack i am prayerless it's a struggle for me to pray i'm having these dreams i shared my dreams she said oh, oh, oh those are demonic dreams she proceeded because she has that gift of interpreting dreams she interpreted the dreams but the, the exact message she was telling me about the dream was what the conclusion i had already come to when i woke up in the morning so i knew that there were things that needed to be broken and then she said she said that you know also she was feeling like there were things going on with familiar spirits that we really needed to pray against so i said okay we're gonna pray and so we prayed actually she prayed because i couldn't pray i told her i can't pray i don't know what's going on but i'm not in a position to pray so she began to pray for me and we spent half an hour praying and somewhere in be in the middle of that prayer that we were having there was a breakthrough because suddenly and when i say suddenly i mean suddenly i felt something move inside of me and i felt that thing i feel when when i pray with her it's like the spirit inside of me began to pray and by the way this has already been like over a week i've not even been able to really pray in the spirit but this time the holy spirit just showed up the spirit began to pray inside of me pray inside of me as she was praying i was praying inside and then i started to pray out loud and the bible verses just started coming to me and i began to pray and i was so so relieved that the Holy Spirit was back in my life and was praying through me and I began to speak in tongues which was a whole other amazing situation because I seldom speak in tongues I wish I could be like these people who speak in tongues all the time but for me it's not however when I speak in tongues doors open chains are broken shackles are broken i know that for a fact because those are the times when i pray in tongues the heavens are open spiritual things happen and there's just damage done in the spirit so i began to pray in the spirit and i began to pray in tongues and the word of the lord came to me from the book of joshua i will not this was what just broke me open completely the word of the lord joshua 1 chapter 3 no joshua joshua chapter 1 verse 3 and verse 5 and the word said and i'll read it to you i'll just read it to you directly because i have my bible here it said every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that i have given unto you there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with thee i will not fail thee nor forsake thee so when the spirit began to pray and the spirit prayed that through me i broke down and i began to cry i began to cry and i said lord i claim my dominion i stand and i declare that 
everywhere my foot shall touch i will have dominion lord and i take back my glory that had been attempted to be stolen from me i take back my honor i stand upon your word in the book of isaiah chapter 45 lord where you said that you would cut the gates of brass i stand upon your word you know and so i began to cry and there was a breakthrough now prior to that breakthrough i remember as Catherine was praying i was like lord holy spirit i know you are here i have faith that you are here i don't have to feel you to know that you're here your word says and i've said this i think twice on separate videos that when you pray and challenge god with his word he responds because god puts his name above all things okay and so he responds in that way and i said lord your word said in the in your in the book of isaiah you said that and it shall come to pass isaiah 65 and it shall come to pass that when they call on me i will hear and while they are yet when they call on me i will answer and while they are yet speaking i will hear so i've been calling to you why are you not answering i have been crying out to you why are you not hearing lord is your word not true is your word not true and in that moment it's like the holy spirit came and took over and all of those other things happened you know while i was in the spirit and i had a spiritual breakthrough in that moment and i just wept i wept like a child i cried my heart out and i just said thank you jesus i felt the love i felt the comfort and we prayed for half an hour and we said goodbye but i knew i wasn't done so I got back to prayer by myself i said i'm gonna continue in prayer and i began to pray against familiar spirits now i don't know how this familiar spirits got entry to be quite honest with you i don't know because i don't deal in new age stuff i don't you know those doors were long closed but i i suspect that it was through the dream because even before this dream about the hair you know i as i mentioned to you i'd had two dreams but when I woke up in the morning, instead of really aggressively confronting those dreams and canceling them, I was too weak to pray. And so that was the strategy of the enemy was to incapacitate me spiritually because he knew like when I get into serious aggressive prayer, things happen. So his strategy this time was to just squeeze me and, and just make it impossible for me to pray such that when those dreams came and got introduced i was not able to pray effectively you, know, you see what i mean so this is how the enemy that's why it's very important to pray guys prayer is the most important weapon you'll ever have nothing more important than prayer because that's your connection with god that's how you communicate so because the initial two dreams that i had had earlier in the week just kind of went like that unaddressed i was powerless but today after the i received the breakthrough when i prayed with catherine i continued to pray and this time so much stuff happened i was praying by myself and I began, I decided it's time to self-deliver. I don't know what doors were open that have caused me to be under spiritual attack, but I began to pray aggressively against these doors. And as I was praying, I noticed every time I mentioned in the name of Jesus, my body trembled. I got goosebumps. I was shivering, cold, and inside of me at the mention of the name of Jesus, I was shaking and this is something that has never happened to me before I was like what's going on what's going on but I continued to pray I prayed and I was casting out things I was binding things I was binding and loosing according to the word Matthew 18 18 whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven so I was binding and loosing binding and loosing renouncing i said lord i don't know what door i might have opened but i come before you i confess my sins before you and i renounce and denounce any connection with 
the occult, any connection with the, the workers of iniquity. I renounce you, I denounce you, I renounce you, I reject you, I cut myself off from you, I claim that I am part of a royal priesthood and that I am covered by the blood of Jesus and that the blood of Jesus speaks greater things than the blood of Abel. And I just continued to pray and pray. And then I began to feel like I wanted to throw up. So pretty much today was like a self-deliverance. I began to feel like I wanted to throw up, you know? And I began to burp a lot in the process, but I was like, I'm gonna press in and I'm gonna press on because the power was back. I could feel the Holy Spirit. I took advantage. I prayed, I covered my blood, the house with the blood of Jesus. I prayed over my marriage. I, oh, Holy Spirit. I just prayed over my husband. I prayed over our plans. I prayed over the house. I prayed for spiritual openness. Because even this week, spiritually, I felt blind. I was not able to perceive anything. I was not able to discern anything. And it was the worst place for me to be. I just felt like I was in darkness. So as I prayed and continued to pray, I don't know for how long, it was probably for about an hour or so. It's like at the mention of the name of Jesus, oh, I was like cold, shivering, but the shivering wasn't from outside. The shivering was from inside of me. I'm like, whatever, whatever it is, or whatever and it's so amazing I really thank God because last week in two prophetic messages the Lord spoke to me the first message was that you shouldn't trust everyone and shouldn't let everyone know what your plans are the second message was that just as God has angels that watch over us for our well-being the enemy has what they call demonic watchers and these watchers or monitoring spirits are monitoring our lives and trying to find ways that they can sabotage our lives and our destiny. So I began to pray against the monitoring spirits, against the demonic watchers. I began to just pray and ask the Lord to bring help and reinforcement from the angels. I prayed until there was nothing left. I was done. And I felt peace. I went to the bathroom because I just felt like I wanted to throw up. And I began to feel like I wanted to throw up, but I couldn't throw up. But I kept burping, a lot of air coming out of me. And then I took a break. And then Catherine sent me a text and I told her what happened. She said, that's very good. That's very good. I wish you had thrown up, but the burping is just, just as well, just as good. And then she told me what I needed to do was anoint myself with oil and pray the word John 17 17 and also to declare the word Isaiah 10 26 right that it and it shall come to pass that by reason of the anointing the yoke shall be broken off of their shoulder and the burden from off of their necks now I have anointing oil in my office my home office which has been prayed for and I use it from time to time and I said I'm going to do exactly that so I came to my office I anointed myself with oil and I spoke the word of the Lord upon my life and I poured I anointed my head as well my crown with oil and I prayed and I asked the Lord to restore my glory and my honor and to command the enemy to return to me everything that had been stolen in the spiritual and return it seven times return it ten times and I said, Lord, I'm asking you to expose my enemies. And I believe that God is going to expose my enemies because I've been going through some crazy stuff. And so I know that these things have spiritual connotations. So after praying, I was drained. I was so drained. I went to sleep. I slept for about two hours. And when I woke up, the old me was back. I felt open and I felt I felt myself again and I knew that something had happened this afternoon when I prayed because 
you know, I could have just gone to watch TV. My husband's been watching TV in the basement all day. And my flesh wanted to do that, but I said, my spiritual life right now is under siege. Watching TV is not going to help me today. What I need to do is address my spiritual problems because the way things are going, whatever was happening in the spiritual was now beginning to leak into my physical world and I was beginning to see things in the physical that were aligning with things in the spiritual that were not to my benefit. So when I woke up from sleep, I felt at peace and I felt that connection with God had been restored. So I'm sharing this story with you because I want you to realize that there are times that we feel, there are times when we feel distant from God and sometimes it's maybe our, our own doing, you know, we're not praying enough and so we lose that connection. But sometimes the enemy can literally put you in that chokehold where you feel you are in the wilderness like I was. And it's a spiritual thing because of all of these things that are happening at the same time. And when that happens, it's vitally important to find someone to pray. If you can't pray, find someone who's anointed in the area that you're looking for help and have them pray for you and have them pray with you. Because that is what we are here for as brothers and sisters. We are here to lift each other up and each and every one of us has a different gift. So the first thing you want to be able to do is pray. If you can pray, find someone who has the anointing, the grace for deliverance, for example, the grace for intercession to pray over you and to pray and stand in the gap with you to lift you up in prayer and hold you in those moments when you feel you can't walk by yourself in prayer in the spirit the other thing i was gonna say something important but it slipped my mind i'm sure i'll remember it and when i do i'll mention it to you so i feel refreshed right now but the one thing i think that helped me was the fact that even when was that i did not go by my feelings because even though i felt i couldn't pray and i was spiritually lethargic i still read my bible every day I still memorized my Bible verses. I still believed that God was there with me even though I couldn't feel him. And that's the walk of faith, brothers and sisters. We don't always have to go according to how we feel. We have to go according to the word of God. And when you make a commitment to God that you're going to walk with him, then you have to walk with God regardless of how the situation around you looks like and regardless of how you feel. A commitment is a commitment. You don't just partake of a commitment because you're feeling good so now you can partake and engage in the commitment even when you don't feel good you have to persist and you have to continue so i wanted to share this testimony with you guys um as i sit here i feel whole the sleep i think helped just to repair me however because when i woke up i just totally felt different i felt more connected and so I just wanted to share that with you. My video has been a little bit long, um, but I wanted to share this with you so that you can take from it what you can and understand that when you're under spiritual attack, there is always going to be a way out. So I love you guys. I would like to pray with you guys, and I'm going to do that, but I am going to make a separate prayer video just for you guys. Um, that if you're feeling that you're in that wilderness and you don't know what to do or you feel that you're under spiritual attack The Lord will come through for you. Okay, I remembered what I was gonna say, but I'm gonna say it in the second video I love you guys. God bless you. God keep you and please if you watch this video today wherever you are remember me in prayer tonight and ask the Lord to continue to protect me and to preserve me and to give me the courage to walk because being in an intercess an intercessor is not easy when you're intercessing and you're you're not you you are breaking the chains off of people the chains of oppression off of people the enemy doesn't like that so he's going to attack you he's going to attack your family he's going to attack everything that is dear to you and so that means i'm always going to have to be on tiptoe 
always going to have to be in the spirit and spiritually alert and aware to be able to be in prayer without ceasing. So please pray for me, brothers and sisters, even as I pray for you and pray for my ministry. I love you guys and I will be making, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.